Welcome to sunny, beautiful Paul, which is on the south coast of the UK. Um, we're currently in Corona lockdown, um, and during this time, we're gonna, we were trying to share as much information and as many life skills, learn as many life skills as possible. So I'm going to spend a few moments to show you how you number a mainsail. Over 20 years ago, when I started RS, we used to make and sell piles of Optimus, and I numbered hundreds of sales during that time, and I learned. I guess the hard way um, and I just thought I'd share with you the quickest and easiest way to number a mainsail uh, to help you guys um, and for the younger sailors watching this is a really cool life skill because I promise you if you can number a mainsail uh, and help people out at your local sailing club or your mates uh, you'll be hugely popular because some people find it a real challenge some people completely hate doing it um, but it's important that it's neat, it really helps the race and officials, certainly with finishing. Um, so look, um, I've got here an RS Fever XL mainsail, which is a, which is a Dacron version for training, but I'm gonna do the Dacron version because it gives me a nice white background. Makes it easier to show you what's going on. Uh, obviously if you're doing the racing version, it'll be see-through, it's a little bit harder to see everything, but the technique and everything else is exactly the same. When you get your new Fever main from RS, uh, we partner with Hyde Sales and you'll notice there is no longer any single use plastics involved in the equation. So your cell will come in its cell bag, may be delivered in a box which can be recycled, but in, uh, wrapped in around the cell bag or the cell, there is now no plastic, uh, which is great news for reducing single use plastics. So look, I'm gonna get, this, I'm gonna get the cell out of the bag. Oh, the, the digital eights have already um, dropped out the end, They'll, you'll have eight of those in your kit with your cell, you can cut those up to make any numbers let, and letters for the country codes. Um, I've already pre-done mine already to speed up the process so I don't need those right now. I'm going to get the cell out of the bag, which again is just to add, got zero plastic on it, on it, which is great news for our environment as we try and reduce the number, amount of plastic we use. Um, I'm just going to roll it from the bottom and, and I'm going to try and do it from the wrong way to make it as easy for you guys as possible to see what's going on. I'm going to roll up the cell like so. Um, I'm going to try and avoid walking on the sail. Um, and with a fever mainsail, um, we number it from the baton that's just underneath the sail insignia, the RS Fever logo, and it starts at that point there. Okay, so you're going to need a few bits of equipment to get you going, not very many. A nice hard surface. I've got myself a piece of board here, which makes my life nice and easy. Um, you need a little marker pen or a pencil and a ruler. Okay, so I've cut out my digital eights. I've made up the cell number 6531. If, if somebody in the world is sailing that boat and they message us, we will send them a free cap or something. Um, so the first thing to notice about an RS cell is on most of the cells there is markings already on the cell which show you where you start from and really help you with the process. So the, 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 there's, a, there's, a, there's a faint line in line with the baton which marks the, where the top of the number is going to go and then there's a line down here which marks where you're going to start from because you with a cell number you always work from the the back edge of the cell, the leech of the cell moving forward. So one thing to remember about numbering cells is it is always starboard side high. So the starboard side cell numbers go high, port side cell numbers on the other side go below them. I don't think I can name a class that doesn't do this. Pretty sure it's in the racing rules of sailing. I'm sure there is a class that does something different. But for certainly all RS classes and all core major international classes, starboard side high. That's the first thing. Spend some time and make sure you get that right. When I do it, I always have to imagine I'm on a start line, main sheets, tiller, 
mast there, just about across the line. I know that's the front of my sail, that's the back of my sail, that's my starboard side. Now I'm looking at this way and I know this is the starboard side. So always check where you're starting from. Again, I've laid the sail out as neat and flat as I can to make it as easy as possible. So my sail number is 6531. When I do the starboard side, I'm gonna lay them 6531. When I do the port side of the sail, I'll start with 1356. So it reads the right way, but again, I'm gonna start backwards because you start from the, always start from the back edge of the sail. So, here's number six. Um, the key to numbering a sail, and it's not rocket science, is we simply take a corner of the backing material, pull it back to, a lee, to leave a small sticky bit like this in the corner. Um, hopefully you can all see this. This allows us to lay the cell number on without it getting stuck and get it into the right place. So look, I can see my top line's about here, my rear line's about there, and I'm gonna lay it on. And once I think I've got it in the right place, I can just stick that corner on. And once that corner's stuck on, I can then lay it out and check that I think I've got it right. If it's wrong, it's very easy for you to peel that off and start again, um, without destroying the cell number or getting in too much of a pickle. So look, let's get that back to where I was, because that was roughly in the right place. I was happy with that. And then all I'm gonna do is slowly pull the backing off and work around. And I don't quite know how to describe this, but never try and stick down a whole flat edge and always try and work to the corners and then it will go on nice and easy. Give it a little rub. Where, where there's stitching across your, your numbers, just give those a little bit more rub so it rubs into the stitches. And there's my number six, my first number. I'm then gonna mark 45 mil from the top, 45 mil from the bottom. Gonna join them up with the line. I've got a ruler here that's not that straight. Um, a little line in the middle so I know where I'm going. Um, so the general rule is if your cell numbers are 230 millimeters high, they are spaced 45 millimeters, you space them 45 millimeters apart and any class rule, most class rules that use 230 millimeter cell numbers, the class rule will state your cell numbers can be between 40 and 50 millimeters apart. It's not always the case, but generally that's the case. If your cell numbers are 300 mil wide, you generally go for a 60 millimeter gap between them. And I suspect the class rules will read something like 50 between 50 and 70 or 55 and 65 millimeters apart will, will be within tolerance. The importance of getting cell numbers right is allowing finishers on the race course to make their jobs easy, allowing them to finish and, and to be able to read numbers. When they're all over the place, you're making it really hard for the finishes, the people that are writing down as people cross the line. So my next number is number five. Again, I've peeled down the corner, as you can see, so it's all ready to go. Just gently lay it on without sticking down that corner. I'm lining up the top. Looks like that bottom can go across a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna give that a whirl. Oh look, that's kicked in a bit too far at the bottom, I think. So I just need to do that again. Now we've gone a bit too far the other way. But again, with this technique of just pulling back the corners, uh, it's really easy. You can do it a lot time and time again. So now I'm not gonna, I'm gonna work one away first, get that side done, and then just follow, oh, the cell number down. If you get a crinkle like this I've just got there, it's no drama, hold down a part of the cell letter or cell number that's good, that's, that, that's the right, grab the rest, give it a yank up, and it allows you to simply relay it down. Cell numbers of this variety 
are pretty resilient. It's pretty straightforward to um, um, to pick them up and lay them back down again as long as you're careful. I put my pencil down somewhere, so I'm moving to my pen. Um, again, another mark, another 45. Tiny little mark up there. Tiny little mark down there, 45 millimeters apart. I'm then going for the number three. Again, so I'm just going to pull back the number here, like so, sharp fold, like so, um, I try not to make it an E, I try and make it a number three, get a marking lining up the top and the bottom, Relatively happy how that's gone. And again, I'm just going to work from the corner. I'm not going to try and do it all at once. I'm going to get that little bit that leg done first. And as I get to the corner again, I'm just going to go past that middle section, do the little leg, middle stump, so to speak, on the three, and pull that out. Nice and simple. And lastly. Got my number one. I'm gonna mark my. Uh, look at that! I finally found my pencil. Um, again, I'm gonna peel back the top. It's no difference. Um, I'm gonna line it up. Like so. Stick down that edge. And there we go. Six, five, three, one. At this point, I'd roll up the sail, flip it over, lay it back out, number up the other side, obviously the port side of the sail being low. Super easy, give yourself some time, find a nice surf surface, small ruler, pencil, and a pen. It couldn't be easier. Hopefully, uh, it's a really cool skill to learn, and hopefully come next year's Fever Worlds, wherever they may be, depending on what happens over the next few months. Um, we as RS will need to number less of yourselves and you'll be fully pumped up and ready to do it yourself. But hopefully, as you can see, that cell hopefully is in class rules. I think it is. Um, nice and clear, nice and easy for our race officials to be able to read and understand. And also looking smart in photos. Another reason why cell numbers should always look good. My name's John, thank you for tuning in. If you've got any questions about numbering cells, then just leave comments behind. Um, thank you very much.